Hey everyone, I'm joined today by Trill Toya, who has an amazing story to tell us. If you weren't aware, over the weekend there was a tragedy in Florida. Um, and one of the things I keep on hearing is a handgun is no match for an AK-47. Well, on the phone, I have Trill Toya here who can attest that is not exactly true. Trill Toya, back in January, if not right, January it, had, it happened? Yes, it was actually um, on New Year's. On, on New Year's, uh, Trill Toya was working security at a nightclub and one of the patrons got into a fight and was ejected. That patron went to his car and retrieved an AK-47 and started shooting at the nightclub. Trill Toya took action and stopped him. You are you are a vet, right? Yes. What did you do in the army? I was a truck driver. You were a truck driver. 88 Mike. 88 Mike. And then after the army, you went into security, and this is how this incident happened tell us what happened that night um basically just like you said uh it, it happened almost as quick as you were able to say it um the the gentleman got into an altercation with someone else um we didn't put both of them outside we only put one outside so that it specifically so that it wouldn't go into the parking lot um, and the one that we put outside just happened to be the one with an AK-47 in his, in his SUV. And he just, he beelined it for his SUV. He went and retrieved it immediately and came back firing shots in whichever direction the shots wanted to go. He wasn't really, uh, careful with his shots at all, obviously, um, when he came up towards the front, I saw that he was going towards the doors and I just knew it was a concert night that night. So it was a packed house and I just knew that he couldn't, I couldn't let him get inside. So I, I took two shots from behind cover and two shots hit. And um, a few minutes later, the police was there. <laughs> yeah, the police called you a hero, which I totally agree with. So when you saw him, your first instinct was to get to cover and then return fire? I wouldn't necessarily say, I don't know. I feel like when you say instinct, it's like there's a little voice saying something. And it was like, I don't know. It just happened, <laughs> if that makes sense. Like everything just fell into place. I didn't, I didn't really think much the entire time. I guess just... All of the training was still still had a good hold of me, and it was just like pure mechanics. When you did that, um, what do you think would have happened if you were there without a without a handgun? Um, I mean, I still would have done something. I probably just would be dead today. But I, I definitely still would have done something. Um, depending on whether I was successful or not, he may have made it into that club and um, shot whoever he was going after to shoot and probably a few more people. The amazing thing to me is that is such a hero story and I think that should be celebrated and be on the news much like uh, mass shooting. But it doesn't seem like that's the case. Um, honestly, you can tell my friend Devin told me about it. I didn't even know about it. Yeah. Why do you think that is? Um, I mean, the same theory is one oops gets rid of a thousand attaboys. Like, people don't want to hear good news anymore, first of all. It seems like everybody only wants the drama. Um, but then on top of that, it just doesn't fit the agenda these days. Uh, they don't, they don't really want a bunch of people going around saying how oh, guns actually can be used for good, and they can be used for protection and not just an assault of someone's life. Yeah, I believe you saved a lot of people's lives that night. Where did you receive your training from? Um, well, even though I was a truck driver in the Army, I was in an infantry unit, um, and they made us go and train with the infantry guys uh, so that we were more on top of our game. Um, and after that, I mean, you know, you, you don't really get a lot of mandatory training with your security licensing. So other than that, I really just do everything that I can afford to do 
Um, and other than that, I read everything that I can. If I'm looking on the internet for different um, information, I always make sure uh, that I'm weary of the source and I always try to cross reference as much as I can to make sure that my information is accurate as possible. Um, but yeah, just train to my limits. Yeah. Uh, you run your own security company. What is that security company? Uh, it is Lions Pride Securities. And how can people get in touch with that and find out if they need you? Uh, you're in the Huntsville, Alabama region, right? Yes, I'm in Huntsville, Alabama, which is a great, very rapidly growing area. Um, if anyone is thinking about coming and bringing a company here and wanting to hire some security. Uh, you can reach me at lionspridesecurities at gmail.com or you can reach me by phone at 912-358. Uh, nope, sorry, that's the wrong one. It's 912-417-9522. Yeah, you don't want to give out the wrong phone number there. <laughs> yeah, no, I almost gave out an old number. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, it's 417-9522 and... My Instagram is Trill Toya, just like how it sounds, T-R-I-L-L-T-O-Y-A. Now, now, getting back to the training, what would you recommend women out there? Because you're a woman, of course. What would you recommend to women about getting training with guns? Um, well, the first thing that I would recommend is to supplement that training with weight training. Um not only will it help you with your shot it, uh it'll help with confidence just in general um i would just recommend i mean everybody should work out anyways but yeah definitely would recommend um some type of weight training along with that but training other than just stationary indoor range training that's great it's better than nothing However, if somebody can just walk up to you and smack your gun out of your hand or something, it's kind of pointless for you to have it and you just armed your assailant. So, I mean, you need to be positive that once, God forbid, something does happen, you're not going to freeze up and become a liability to yourself. You're going to be able to uh, efficiently protect yourself without being afraid or more afraid than necessary, I suppose. And do you think your training helped you in that situation with the guy with the AK-47? Um, yes, definitely the military did not hurt at all in that situation. Um, but yeah, training and really different aspects of training. Like I said, even the even weight training, even the, the little bit of Krav Maga training that I've done, all of that equals a, a certain confidence that it goes more past just only firearms training. You say you think people need to expand their training and not just concentrate on like a flat range type of training, like dynamic training. I know Kevin Dixie, for example, does a lot of dynamic training. Yes, I actually just uh, finished training with Kevin Dixie at his NOC firearms training event, and it was really awesome. Um, but yeah, you need to you need to get around. You need to you know feel what the difference is of when you're moving and you're having to to get your your sight picture while you're moving you need to be able to feel what it's like when you've got adrenaline coursing through you and your arms are shaking and you're trying to pull off a shot while your arms are shaking there are just so many different factors that if all you ever do is put yourself in a comfy indoor range setting where you're in a nice isosceles position you just you're never gonna be as ready as you should be for the unfortunate things that, I mean, if we look around, they're happening every day. Yeah, one of the things that amazed me by reading the article about you, reading the articles, is that they said after you shot them and you secured the area, that you started administering first aid to them. I attempted. I attempted to um, administer first aid and I've actually said this was one of my biggest mistakes that night. I keep a trauma kit with me. However, because of my uniform and with it being a, a, a slim, sometimes pocketless uniform, 
sometimes without even a good belt back then when my gear was crap it's not crap anymore but um it's really difficult to keep a trauma kit on me so i had to run inside to try and grab it and the the he he had help and was being drugged away to a vehicle when that was happening and they went to the hospital so i wasn't able to administer aid i did attempt yeah. James Yeager released a video a few days ago about the need to carry like a trauma kit or at least a tourniquet with you. And I totally agree with that. Um, I actually keep a trauma kit with me on all my cars and stuff like that. You never know what happened, what will happen. Like but beyond guns, I slashed, I slashed up in my hand on a way to a machine gun shoot and I cut it pretty deep. But I had my like quick plot and everything, so I was able to go ahead and stop the wound and actually drive myself to the hospital. Um, so I think it's very important to get the knowledge out that you really need to have medical training. Would you agree with that? That you need to have medical training on top of the firearm training, like some type oh, of first most aid. Most definitely, most definitely. Um, I mean, you can't rely on other people for it. And at the end of the day, no matter how much you train. There's other people who are out here training too. So, you know, every dog has a day. You never know, you know, what may happen to you if you're out there trying to defend yourself or others from a situation. You might be the one trying to to inca incapacitate someone else and then end up being the one incapacitated. And I mean, you feel like a fool looking around wondering who's gonna help you and you passed up all of those classes and you only posted pictures of cool Gucci guns on Instagram and you never looked at any of the first aid stuff and purchased any of it. Yeah. If there was a gun law that made that club a gun-free zone, do you think it would have stopped that guy? No, of course not. I know, but I, I have to ask because some people want to push for expansion of gun-free zones. So. Yeah, no, that's just, that's asinine. Do you, I don't these people just, they don't, a lot of them just don't have the ability to think for themselves. And they figure that if a lot of people tell them something, it has to be true. Like large groups of people can't be misinformed or just be genuine liars. Yeah, one of the things that really surprised me, because I am the uh, Virginia State Director for Gun Owners of America, mm -hmm. and I was at a uh, pro protest, a Moms Demand Action rally protest, with uh, your friend, uh, Devin Perkins, who hosts Trenchwork Chronicles. Right. And we were there, and about 15 minutes before the protest was supposed to happen, buses pulled up. And all these Moms Demand Action people walked up to the Virginia Capitol, got up on the steps. They took a bunch of pictures. They were there for... 10 to 15 minutes at most. Then they all walked back down, got on the buses, and left. And Devin and I were just like looking at each other like, what the hell just happened? Right. What exactly was the purpose of this? Yeah, it's like a photo op. And I think on the gun, on the pro-gun side, we have to avoid those type of situations. We're not there for photo ops. We are actually grassroots, and we want to keep that up. And I want to thank you for doing what you did. Because uh, you just proved the point. Um, but, you know, people are going to say that, you know, that's a one in a million, but I keep on reading about more and more people being able to defend themselves with guns. I mean, when you look at a lot of these situations, we've got veterans that are, you know, either they're um, discharged from the military or they're just out, you know, on their off time or whatever. And they're taking action because they have the proper training, they're responsible gun owners, and they're saving people's lives. We keep seeing the stories. And the people that aren't veterans who are doing it are also responsible gun owners. People are just choosing to ignore these instances, which is completely asinine compared to the other. Because when you look at the other instances, no one stopped anyone. What at that one school, the, the one deputy he ran, or security, whoever he was, he yeah. ran? I'm sure he wasn't properly trained. I'm sure he's probably oh. never done a stress shoot. Scott That's Peterson. When it actually hit the fan, he was afraid. Yeah, if, if you look at the situation there, and you look at what happened in Maryland, where a 
guy went into a school with a gun and there was a duty officer who, instead of running from the situation, ran towards the situation and he was able to stop, stop a mass shooting. Um, I think that people who think that gun, can, gun free zones are going to stop anything are seriously misguided. And I, I just don't understand why they are so misguided. They just regurgitate talking points. And a lot of it's wrong. Right. A lot of it is wrong. And a lot of the wrong information you can find online as if it's right. Yeah. Neil deGrasse Tyson sent out a tweet where he actually listed facts about mass shootings and stuff like that. And he got attacked. And he was forced to apologize because they said it wasn't the right time to bring up those facts. And I think what they meant by it wasn't the right time to bring up those facts is that they were relying on emotion and trying to push their agenda through emotion. And those facts kind of countered their emotion. That's exactly what it is. I mean, we can wait all we want and it's not going to bring anyone back, unfortunately. Um, but the longer that we wait, however, the issue is still compounding itself. And they're just, they're not finding any plausible solutions they're they are linking everything to the gun because they're afraid of the gun when they should be afraid of the person exactly you're going to be at the gunathon in april there's going to be a lot of popular youtubers some actors people in the 2a community what are you most looking forward to at the gunathon i'm always looking to network i've done some really awesome networking this year and some met a lot of people that I feel like have been placed into my life and I've been placed into theirs for a reason. And I'm really excited to meet a lot more people that I feel that way about um, just to continue expanding my network so I can try and get me some jobs. <laughs> <laughs> well, there'd be plenty of opportunities for there. All right, that is April 25th, uh, the Gunners of America Gunathon in Ashburn, Virginia. It's gonna be a great event. It's being held at Silver. It's being held at Silver. It's being held at Silver Eagle Group, and we hope that you come out. Uh, this is John. I want to thank you, Trill Toya, for all your time. Uh, tell people how they can reach you once once again. Um, Trill Toya on Instagram, T R I L L T O Y A. And for security purposes, at phone number 912-417-9522 or by email at lionscriedsecurities at gmail.com. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for having me. All right. This is uh, John, uh, VA Director of Gun Owners of America and writer for MLN.com. And you guys have a nice day.